before we go into it, I'll just give some background because I might chuck this one up on YouTube. I myself am a very long time uh, WoW, WoW veteran. I've pretty much been playing the game like nonstop for about nine years, uh, you know, at varying levels. But um, I have played at like a high end uh, and I've played at mid end and I've played at low end, I guess, um, all with mythic rating and stuff like that. I've I've jumped around a bit, you know, some some years or some tiers I wanted to push a bit harder so I so I played a bit more. Sometimes I wanted to um take it chill and play with friends, so I took a step back from high end. But I've pretty much been raiding on and off, mostly on for like the best part of nine years or so. So I've got like a very much wow brain. I'm coming over to Final Fantasy fourteen and probably a lot of this is going to how old is this video? Two years. So it'll be interesting to see how like my perspective is two years later down the line. But I imagine a lot of what he's going to talk about in this video will be like very relevant to me. Let's get let's get going with this video. Why I quit Mythic Raiding in WoW to raid in Final Fantasy XIV. Could be me. Could be me. Hey everyone, my name is Lynx Camilli, and in this week's That's video, true, I Link. wanted to jump on the bandwagon of why I quit WoW videos, but give my unique perspective as a hardcore raider and someone hey, I've who done the same. enjoy the typical FF14 hooks like the story. Perhaps you're a oh, I do like the story though. wondering if you'd enjoy raiding in FF14, or perhaps you're purely an FF14 player who wants to know how a hardcore raider finds enjoyment in the game. Either way, I often feel like these videos focus on the casual side of 14 and not so much the high-end raiding side. Okay, this is so going to be an interesting take. Raiding in WoW to raid in FF14. I'm a I'm currently at time of making this and watching this a guild master of a mythic raiding guild where we raid 2 days a week and we get around top 500 in the world which is pretty decent. Not amazing, but, you know, pretty decent for the time investment. So I'm, I'm myself as a player, I'm fairly washed up now um, compared to, you know, how I played back in the day. But I don't think I'm bad. Like, I'm very consistent. Uh, consistently bad. No, I, I'm very, I'm quite a consistent player and I prefer, like, killing the boss, doing, doing the mechanics and taking the responsibilities and jobs over just sitting back and slamming DPS like a black mage or something, right? Anyway, that's kind of my background and intro. Let's jump in. ...player whose enjoyment of FF14 comes almost solely from raiding, <laughs> and have star. notoriously skipped oh, all hell. of the story content in 14, speedrunning to endgame, and reaching raiding as quickly as possible. <laughs> nice this rocks. is a pretty uncommon gameplay style in FF14, with the main draws of the game being the story, the characters, the world, glamours, <laughs> crafting, housing, and other I think raiding's a big part, though. Content. This isn't to say I don't Skip enjoy these man. parts of the game, and I don't look at skipping the story and rushing to endgame as some sort of badge of honor, but what I care about the most he is knows. endgame and high-end raiding. This probably sounds pretty familiar if you're a mythic raider in World of Warcraft. What I'm here to tell you is that despite the game not catering to high-end raiders, there is still tons of enjoyment to be found and difficult challenges to overcome in Final Fantasy XIV. It looks raiding. like the raids An important part can of be FF14 quite difficult, raiding right? That is often not very well discussed Yo, that is mechanic. the issue of boss count in raiding. What I mean by this is that every savage raid tier in Final Fantasy XIV oh, so has stack, but not overlap. bosses. And this sounds like an incredibly low amount compared to WoW's 10 to 12 boss raids, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that we do actually get comparable boss counts per raid tier. It's just not all in Savage. You see, in World of Warcraft, raids are released as one complete piece of content, containing all of the bosses for a tier in one area. Mm -hmm. When a new raid in WoW is released, that is THE raid. And aside from Mythic Plus... Yeah, and it makes all other previous raid basically irrelevant. Like, all of the previous raid content, all, of, all the other raids from that expansion completely become irrelevant the day a new raid comes out. One thing I, I know about FF so far is because of like the min eye level scaling, the no echo thing, literally you can go and do level 50 ARR content and it's still like decently challenging, which I think is absolutely amazing to have in the game. You just, just don't have that as an option in WoW. You know, uh, it's even as far, like it's so bad in WoW that, you know, right now, you know, at the time that we're watching this, the current raid in WoW is called yeah Abarus the uh, Shadowed Crucible is the current raid in WoW and the previous raid was called uh, the Vault of the Incarnates right if you tr if I logged into WoW right now and tried to get a raid for Vault of the Incarnates it would probably take me a good couple hours and it would probably be absolutely terrible there would be like basically no reason to go except for maybe like transmog 
and you'd have a very very hard time doing it if you wanted to make a raid for the current raid there would be like 100 plus groups going and and essentially that's just kind of like the life cycle of, of wow raids they last for one patch or one and a half patches or what like one one full patch or two too many patches however you look at it because there's a 0.5 patch then then it's just like gone and it will just get lost in time until like maybe the next expansion where people will go back and farm it like with friends where it's much much easier because of a uh, power creep to go and get those transmogs for like a very much a fraction of the effort right um whereas like in final fantasy what i've seen so far is everything is like somewhat difficult still especially if you toggle on all those little extra things like the uh like you said I, uh level scaling high level scaling min eye level and then like no echo if you toggle all of that on you actually have like probably probably isn't in the same state as when it was released but it's decently challenging still right so it's like at least a good challenging piece of content to go back and do with friends even just for a laugh or something right it's very refreshing to think about and it means that like longevity wise like the raid that you know you can you can justify putting more time and effort into the raids because they're going to have more longevity than just a patch whereas like sometimes you feel like in wow there's a lot of recycled mechanics um sometimes they basically just recycle almost an entire boss sometimes they just bring back an old boss with like one extra gimmick and they have all the same mechanics but like one extra one because it's just lazy and it's like a filler boss because they know a lot like that that raid only lasts a patch right so yeah you can like justify putting a lot more time into developing this kind of stuff when you know it's going to be relevant for a long time yeah for sure mechanics repeat a lot like i think that's just that there's only a finite number of mechanics you can really like envision like there's stack mechanics there's soak mechanics there's spread mechanics there's tank busters there's like uh environmental mechanics and stuff like that like it is quite hard to come up with new ideas and usually wow do about once per tier or once every other tier they try and come up with something in incredibly like unique that hasn't been done yet or they haven't done it yet at least and it's either like a hit or a miss and usually it's a miss but we can we can appreciate the effort that they tried you know <laughs> yeah yeah so people do it yeah people people do go back in wow for like achievements glam we call it transmog and stuff like that um so it, it's definitely like relevant in that sense but the thing is like the difficulty isn't there like there's not an option to go back and make it hard if you actually want to do it for a challenge if you go back and do it for the glam and whatnot you're doing it um with all the power creep that your character has the only the only things in the game that like don't take that into consideration is like the mage tower in wow where you get scaled down and uh time walking as well but time walking is like a complete joke but the mage tower is supposed to be like an actual semi-challenging piece of content which gives you just cosmetic rewards um and it's like it's literally like one one armor set for each character and there's like really not much replay value in it either and usually the scaling's so janky on it that there's always something like super op like a like a potion uh where like a potion from like 12 years ago didn't get scaled down properly um so you can use it and it will just like one shot the boss or like it give you a shit ton of dps or um you can go and farm an entire set of gear with sockets on it which you couldn't do in current day like currently you can get like six sockets max in your entire gear set whereas like back in the day you could get three sockets per armor item so when when it's scaled down you would you would have like 20 sockets as opposed to six you know so there's like some weird cheesiness you can do to it so it makes it quite a little quite a lot easier Losing half your buttons when you sink down is kind of painful. I have noticed that actually, yeah, already doing like the level, the min eye level content when we went into the dungeons yesterday and I didn't have like my, uh, my like number three in my combo. Like I have the one, two, three combo on my Lancer, but I go into a dungeon, I have the one, two combo and like I don't have my, uh, buff that gives me like 10% damage for 30 seconds or whatever. So it's like that I can see like being quite annoying when you're used to playing it a like a certain way, but. I guess again it kind of changes up your gameplay as well so you can like you'll lose some abilities from like the later expansions or the higher levels or whatever which means that again like it's kind of refreshing and if you think about it and like open-minded I, I guess it's like a mindset shift you could uh you could envision it like oh well i'm learning i now i have to learn like a slightly different rotation for this piece of content kind of thing test your knowledge of the job yeah true that's actually true mayhem good point 
And I also think what a cool way to keep it fresh as well, because job switching is so easy, it's just a click of a button, right? You don't have to like reroll your whole character in your class and stuff. You can just change job. If you want a, if you want something to be slightly more challenging, play an off job, you know, play something that's not your main job. Go go and do like some scaled down content and play a job that you're not really used to if you're looking for a bit more of a challenge because it's quite easy to. You can just switch, you know, once it's leveled up and whatnot. It's the only place you'll be facing new encounters. FF14 raids are broken up between 24-man raids, also known as alliance raids, 8-man extreme trials, savage raids, and ultimates. There are 4 bosses per alliance 105 raid, ultimate 2 kills. extreme trials per raid tier, 4 savage bosses per tier, and depending on how you look at it, 1 or 4 bosses in ultimate, bringing us to a total of 11 or 14 bosses per raid tier cycle. The reason I say ultimate can be That's a lot. Four, depending on how you look at it, how often do you get a new raid? Every new patch, every eight months, four months, six, six to eight months, maybe. I mean, if that makes the quality of the raids a little bit better, then I'm all for it, you know? If they're like better scale, like better scaled, better um, balanced and more interesting fights, then I think it's worth the two months. Because there's a lot to do in the game, right? Like you've always got the ultimates, you can, you can go play the old raids and whatnot. I, fr from what I can see, like there's a lot of Final Fantasy streamers who just play raids like a lot like almost every day like with different people as well because i don't think you have like lockouts and saves and stuff in this game do you like you can literally be go and just do the same raid like a bunch of times per week or i could be wrong there i haven't heard anyone talking about oh you do right so you can't like go do a raid and then go do it with someone else the next day and stuff like that for the current raid what about old stuff you don't have a lockout that's cool though so like for old content you could just like, if you're bored, you can just go do this or do that or do it a hundred times or whatever. Yeah, loot lockouts make sense, but, like, you can at least kill the boss, you know, a bunch of times. So you can, like, go and just, like, have a laugh with your friends if you just want to go into a raid and kill some bosses, right? Like, just for the satisfaction of that. Yeah, that's cool. So it works kind of like uh, heroic raids in WoW. Is that ultimate raids are boss gauntlets that contain multiple bosses split up by phases inside of one fight. Which is why ultimate oh. fights are generally upwards of 15 to 18 minutes for one encounter. Ultimates are With multiple bosses in like one this, encounter. You can have a trade-off of having more diversity and variety in bosses, where they exist in the game, their design, and their arenas. With I thought it was just one really long boss fight. Encounters ...and a smaller pool of bosses that drop the best gear in the game. Yo, this arena the room is trippy. The last part there is the most important. When looking to acquire the best gear in the game... Yes, you Ooh, will only have building. four savage bosses to tackle. Dude, that's so cool. It's a transparent floor and a skyscraper flies up at you. That's so cool. That's so unique. So it's a boss rush with no checkpoints. As oh, ultimates okay. Ultimates only exist as an extreme challenge, not rewarding better gear, but a transmog weapon and a title Yo, to get off it. accomplishment. The diversity of oh, rating, like though, a little timer is below that as outside well. of your weekly savage rating, you have many other pieces of content that you can take part in and still receive rewards that fuel your savage and ultimate raids. Alliance Train raids tracks. in comparison to WoW are Dude, this around is so LFR sick. to early normal mode difficulty, but reward coins, which can be turned in for gear upgrade tokens, which are required to upgrade your gear right, to the you highest can see level. Where the trains are coming. These tokens also drop in Savage, so you don't have this to like do a for them, but you know, they're wow. a good way to acquire them for your alt classes, or if you're getting unlucky and not receiving the upgrade tokens fast enough to keep up with your gear upgrades. Moving on to Extreme Trials, the next tier above Alliance Raids, they are around early heroic Dragoon! Bosses meaning that they are very often pugged and don't require voice comms or much commitment to farm them. These bosses drop high item level weapons, allowing you an avenue to acquire a near savage raid level weapon much more easily than savage raiding. Many high-end raiders actively progress these trials while also progressing the savage raid tier, as the weapons from extreme trials can prove highly beneficial when progressing in savage. They also drop mounts, so people farm these extreme trials throughout the entire expansion. This is a nice. huge part of FF14 Keeps them relevant. I love. The fact that a new raid release does not invalidate the previous raids. Oh, because said, right? there are cosmetics tied to the raids, like mounts and transmog items, people actively farm old content forever. And you can always go back and experience an older extreme trial with seven others just for fun. So, like, people can do that in WoW, they just don't really. You know, like you can go back and do the previous raid in the current expansion, but usually people just don't. 
I don't know. I don't know. Like, there's just not enough people doing it, or maybe, maybe I'm just, uh, maybe I'm an uncultured swine, and I just, I just, you know, don't see it happening potentially. Well, I would just wait until I can solo it. Yeah, exactly right. That's the thing. It's like you could go back and have this massive headache, or you could just wait till the next expansion and go solo it and save a shit ton of time, and also have like less competition on the. If you're going for the transmogs and stuff, like you'll have less competition on the drops. Yeah, 20 man raiding is very cringe. Uh it's a huge headache to organize. I'd know. I've done it. I've been a GM on on WoW twice. Thank you by the way, Xbal, for the uh tier 1 sub. Welcome to the Rap Scallions. Very much appreciate that. Yeah, like organizing shit is such a headache. In fact, we're literally going my guild is going through it right now. They're like thinking about potentially like canceling some raid tonight and stuff like this because we've got like one to two people missing, including me. Um it's just a headache to organize. People don't respect officers' time, officers of the guild's time. So, like, people one hour before the raid's due to start will just be like, oh, sorry, I, uh, I'm i going to go get pizza with my mate. And it's like, fair enough, live your life. But at the same time, like, you realize that we now have to run around. Like, tr like if you don't have a backup ready and a, ro a roster big enough to... Uh, you don't have a roster big enough to just interchange people. That's why you kind of need to have like 26-ish people on your roster to do 20-person content. Because if you just had 20, the second like something comes up for anyone or someone wants a day off or someone's sick, you basically can't raid, right? Um, but then that also means that because the roster is 20 people, uh, the roster is 26 and you can only take 20 people, six people every single raid have to sit on the bench as well. So it's like... It's just like this situation where you can't really win and stuff, whereas it's easier if you can just grab some friends and fucking go, you know? But it's really annoying uh, cancelling raids and people just saying, like, one hour before the raid time, like, oh, yeah, sorry, like, I'm going to go get some pizza. Uh, have a good time. And it's like, bro, you're our, you're our main tank. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, oh, maybe that guy can play his alt. Uh, and then because you can't just switch job, someone's got this, like, really shit-geared alt that they don't know how to play, uh, like, for the stand-in. Yeah, it's easy to say just kick the people, but at the end of the day, like, uh, it's very hard. Also, like, recruitment is a raid boss in itself as well. Um, finding finding a constant, like, it's very hard to get a constant flow of actual good players applying to your guild. So you can't really just be like, that person wronged us, let's kick them out. Like, there's a point, you know, there's a there's like a balance of being reason being a reasonable person and being like, all right, fair enough, like, have a night off. But it's also up to them to respect like our time as organizing the guild and organizing the raid is like give us some notice because we actually have no problem with people taking a night off as long as they give us at least a few days notice preferably as early as possible like as early as they know but then like the other day we had someone who was like oh yeah it's my birthday and i'm going out for a meal it's like you knew it was your birthday one year in advance to this date yeah it's the short notices that's the worst because like people don't like for them it's like all right cool i dropped a little message in the attendance channel that took me two seconds great like it takes them two seconds but when we have to find a replacement as officers we have to potentially if we don't have someone ready we have to like run around for sometimes we've spent hours trying to track people down who can fill the spot like we've had like three to four of us asking all of our friends like you know can do you know anyone that wants to raid tonight can cover the spot for us so that we don't have to let down 19 other people who are who have carved out that time in their schedule to raid like it's disrespectful to all the 19 people other raiders but also the officers have to put in all that back end work that usually does you know people don't see you know exactly most people just expect like because because they don't think about it and i get it like they don't it doesn't really cross their mind they're not like like, they just, they don't think, like, beyond the end of their nose. They're just like, all right, cool, I did my part. I told them I can't come tonight. Now I'm going to go live my life. And I, and I get it. It's just like, oh, it's so frustrating when people don't just, like, empathize a little bit with other people's situation, you know? Yeah, and I don't really know how it works in 14 with, like, um, statics and whatnot. I imagine it's something similar, but it's a little bit easier to manage when it's eight people than when it's 20, you know? Yeah, also no alts. Yeah, exactly. So, like... Usually someone can just jump jump in and play like the role that you need. They can just switch. If if they're like half decent at the role that you need, they can jump in. Whereas like if you need like a, a warlock or something on WoW and you don't know any warlocks, then you're just fucked. Because like you can't just have someone just like respect to warlock. They'd have to have a warlock ready 
and have it geared enough to raid at that level. Yeah, like you can pug in WoW, but in Mythic as well, there's another limitation because um, there's not cross server Mythic raiding until like uh, 100 guilds in uh, Alliance and 100 guilds on Horde have killed the the last boss. So usually for the first like two, three months of the tier, ish now like maybe like two months the first like two ish months of the tier mythic is locked cross server so you you ha you can only have people join your raid even if they're from the party finder basically like the pug finder if they're on your server so like i could only find spriggan people to jump into my raid i couldn't have like anyone on on eu jump in which is i think how it works now right and then and then you've also well they've removed it now but there was also on top of that another limitation which was like the fact that there are two factions so you could have Alliance and Horde, and Alliance people couldn't play with Horde and vice versa as well. So there's just so many limitations on it in WoW, and uh, it's just a massive fucking headache, to be honest. <laughs> or to get the mount or transmog, whatever reason it is very you want toxic, to be yeah. there, you can find a group for it. Compare that to World of Warcraft, where a new raid release means all 10 or so bosses that you've been farming are now seemingly gone forever. There are some really fun raids in WoW that I would have loved to keep doing throughout an expansion just out of enjoyment. Yeah. But because a new raid was released irrelevant. and better gear exists, Can't find a gear, nobody a, ran a the old raids. Can't Add find on a to that group. the fact that you can have every class in the game on one character in Final Fantasy XIV, meaning you can swap classes and roles whenever you want, farming old bosses doesn't ever get boring. I feel like we've basically... We haven't even watched the video, but we've basically talked about everything he's going to talk about, I think. <laughs> we've basically hit all the points before he's mentioned them. <laughs> like, he's probably going to talk about all of these things. It's not even pre-watched. Like, we've just opened a discussion with the chat, and everyone's been like, this and that. And then I've been like, oh yeah, that reminds me about this thing, which is fucking annoying. Oh, that reminds me about this thing, which is fucking annoying. And he's just going to be like, yeah, so this thing's fucking annoying. And I'll be like, oh. Oh, we already talked about it. <laughs> He's probably just going to speak my entire mind, dude. Dude, it's just a WoW player brain thing, isn't it? Like, we're just so damaged. We're just so damaged as MMO players that we're just like, we're, we're just like one in the same mentally scarred, full of PTSD, just like, save us. This fucking game has just been abusing us for the past however many years. Maybe I want to tank an extreme trial today, or maybe I want to heal it. Maybe yep. I've been trying to learn melee DPS and don't have a character. Trials then I don't have a gear. The gear for it. This is one of the biggest replayability factors for high end raiders. Yeah, such as for sure. Your Moving on to savage you, raids, then the this is where the best gear in the game will come from, and where most of the challenging raid content lies. Savage difficulty is around N heroic to late mythic difficulty, with each boss being progressively Ooh. more difficult than the last. While yes, WoW does have that is more quite challenging, bosses, then. if you've ever been in a decently progressed mythic guild, you'll be aware of the fact that the first five to seven bosses in a mythic raid are much, much easier than the last three. Yep. There is a sharp increase in difficulty near the end of a mythic raid, whereas Savage is a constant progression of difficulty, meaning that no boss feels like a pushover. Ooh. On top of that, FF bosses I are think also I'm gonna like FF raids. longer than mythic bosses averaging around 8 to 11 minutes per savage fight compared to WoW's 4 to 8 minute average. This I do think that that's quite a long time for a boss fight because in WoW those long bosses feel very long and they take a lot of pulls. I just don't know if like because like usually if you get to like a 10 minute boss fight in WoW you it's like that's a 200 pull boss. But I don't know if, is every Savage boss a 200 pool boss? Or are some of them like, you know, 50 to 100 and stuff? You have 20 minute, yeah, the, the alt fights. I mean, those ones, like, I can see why they're so long and stuff. But, like, I do, I think it's a long time to concentrate. But in the same, in the same sense, like, a Mythic Plus is like, you have to concentrate for 30 minutes. So, I imagine, like, second by second is a little less punishing than WoW, maybe. And that's why the fights can be longer. And also you have a little bit more like recovery, I think. I think. Maybe not. I could be wrong, right? You won't do the DPS check. Okay, so they're very tightly tuned. Yeah, so you'd have to have like Giga Blasters to kind of make up for your DPS if you if you do have a casualty. But I imagine like three or four deaths is pretty much doom. You can die as many times, but your damage reductions. Yeah, exactly. So then you won't be enraged because you will miss the DPS. That is true. At least you can progress the fight. Like, at least when it comes to progressing. Having one death, like, yeah, sure, you might not make Enrage. I don't know if push timers are a thing in Final Fantasy. Like, you need to 
uh, you need to push the boss before a certain thing or it phases at a certain percent and stuff and if how important it is on the timing wise. Um, but at least like you could res someone and you could get to the next phase before like, you know, and you could practice the rest of the fight so you don't have to like just see off and write off like three, four, five minutes. Like in WoW, sometimes, sometimes a guy will literally die to the first mechanic, right? Like you'll pull the boss, someone will just like forget that they're like playing WoW or something. I don't know how it happens. And they'll die to like the literal first mechanic. And then you're like, well, like either we res that guy, but then again, he just died during his opener, during his cooldowns, during Bloodlust, which is like a big raid, uh, whole raid wide steroid. Like it's basically like 30% damage buff. So he, you, you lost the guy during his cooldowns and Bloodlust. So you're missing like a ton of DPS. So sometimes it's like not even worth to res. It's just like, well, just fucking wipe it then, boys. Um, or someone will die like three minutes into the fight and it's like, you know, you can res them and that's fine. But then if another guy dies three minutes into the fight or four minutes into the fight, you're basically like, well, we can't really continue because of like, it could be someone who has like this particular job and stuff like that. And you literally physically cannot res them. It's not like you can res them and they have a debuff. It's like you straight up just cannot res them. So then you just have to call a wipe. Whereas I imagine in Final Fantasy, it's like, okay, well, like we at least can have that body warm and moving around and doing like the mechanics and the soaks and stuff, but they're not just, they're just not doing any damage. So we can like progress the mechanic part of the fight, but we cannot progress the numerical part of the fight, right? You guys corrected me. It, when it comes to Savage and Ultimates, like one, one person dead is like, especially if you're late into progression, it's just like, all right, fucking wipe it, boys. And that, that would be terrible. Like, imagine you're like, you know, 12 minutes into a fight or like 10 minutes into a fight, one guy dies and it's like, well, rip. <laughs> There's no recovery from that. Longer fight duration also exists in extreme trials. So when looking at encounter time across an entire raid tier, FF might actually have more encounter time than WoW's despite having a lower boss count. This yeah. is, of course, made up by World of Warcraft Seems like it track, de almost definitely bosses, would. Whereas FF14 doesn't, but... Boss fight time yeah, can be higher in FF fourteen Celeste. depending on what you're looking at. This is another big reason as to why a hardcore raider can enjoy FF fourteen, as despite a lower boss count, the bosses feel fuller and more complete, with many different phases and mechanics throughout the entire encounter. When moving on to ultimate raids, it gets even crazier. Big boy. Ultimate raids are, without a doubt, the hardest pieces of raiding content ever conceived in an MMO aside from one shots and just cheese bosses. I'm sure many, many, many Spiky robot man. players will scream about how wrong I am for saying that, with Nax Ramus being the hardest raid ever, or Sartharian Three Drakes, or Mythic Gul'dan. Ma Nax Ramus is not a hard raid, bro. Everyone was just dog shit at the game. Yeah, they just like, uh, like Kel'Thuzad has like two mechanics. Mythic Sargeras, how can an eight man raid be harder than a 20 man raid? Yes, Spook, Listen, you're cracked, bro. I've Do been it. There. I know how hard WoW fights can be. I know that the clear rates for end mythic bosses are extremely low. But what I can tell you is that Say mythic Una King. is the only fight in WoW to ever compete with ultimate raids in FF14 in terms of difficulty. Which fight and did he that say? That raid was the least cleared mythic raid in history. Which fight, fight in WoW extremely low. But what I can tell you is that Mythic Unat is the oh. only fight in WoW yeah. to ever compete with ultimate raids in FF14 in terms of difficulty. And that raid was the least cleared Mythic raid in history. I think it was like 100 eight -man kills raids killed are it. so much harder than 20-man raids. 150 because maybe. Because with only 8 players, you can give those players extreme personal responsibility. And it was a 2-boss raid. you just cannot do with 20 people. 20 points of failure versus 8 points of failure. With a smaller amount of fit. Yeah, so it was like the least participated content, the least clear, and therefore like the least cleared, right? But it was also Unat. Like I think a lot of people saw how difficult Unat was, and were just like, "Fuck that! Why? Why would we even bother?" Kind of thing. Failure points. You can create harder individual challenges. Add on the fact that ultimate raids can last up to 20 minutes with one mistake, having the ability to cause a wipe and reset your progress back to the beginning. And oh man, are these fights insanely difficult. You can point I can't out wait. clear dates and how many people I one -shot do ultimates them. and say that they're easier than certain WoW bosses, but that's only because WoW bosses are gear gated and FF14 bosses are not. Ah. Ultimate raids are designed with players being that's best in slot. 
meaning Chill. they are 100% tailor-made <laughs> to be incredibly difficult, and you cannot overgear them. Even when a new raid releases, ultimate raids are item level synced, meaning if you come in with better gear later on, too bad, your stats get lowered to the level they were when the raid was released. That's a very good point that you can't overgear them actually because in WoW, essentially mythic raids do get soft nerfed um, as you get more gear. Like sometimes you're basically just waiting on the weekly lockout to get another like bumping gear so that you can make the fights a little bit easier that week. So sometimes you get stuck and it's like, all right, we're just waiting for reset so we can get another, you know, entire reclear worth of gear onto our characters so that we can be more powerful and stuff trivializes an entire boss which once once was like a really well designed quite tightly tuned boss and then it just becomes a complete joke four years after the first ultimate was released we still have thousands of players attempting them and progressing for months hoping that's to get a good clear. link this is where high-end hardcore raiders that's, that's a good way to do it Final i think Fantasy 14. ultimate raids have basically harder. ruined other mmos for me Without the insane challenges of Ultimate, I just don't know how to have fun in an MMO anymore. Mm, I wow, that's that saying a lot. Challenge. That is saying a the lot. Big words. Wiping 15 minutes in and banging your head in frustration and the immense satisfaction of finally overcoming the challenge and clearing an Ultimate. I, I imagine it's incredibly satisfying. Fights and still enjoy doing them to this day. Some people have hundreds of clears of Ultimates. One day, baby. 105 ultimate kills. No longer needing the transmog rewards, but just doing them because the challenge is so fun. Even after your 20th <laughs> clear, there is still a joy to be had in the amount of skill it requires to be cleared. When I say I enjoy FF14, skill comes naturally that's to me. mostly because I love ultimate raids. Moving on from ultimates, <laughs> a huge reason I stick with FF14 over WoW as a competitive hardcore raider is the simplicity of gearing in FF14. He's a tank, I he's playing Warrior. I how it felt to leave World of Warcraft and come over to Oak FF14 Leaf? and find out that there are actual best-in-slot lists that Wait, give me an extremely clear path of gear progression. I hated the RNG factor of gearing in WoW with some pieces coming from Mythic Plus, meaning I would have to wait for my weekly vault and hope I get the oh, highest Oh, that's a fell cleave, version. baby, I saw it. And other pieces coming from raiding, but maybe they don't ever drop or they go to other players, and I'm seemingly just pulling a slot machine hoping to get an upgrade. In stark comparison, yep, the 14 gearing is completely deterministic. There are only two sources of max item level gear, being Savage Raids and your weekly tombstones. These weekly tombstones are most akin to Valor Points in WoW. They are rewarded okay. to you for completing max level content, with a weekly cap of 450, and gear items ranging from 375 tombstones to 1,000. Only having two How many pieces of loot drop in uh, Savage Raids? Like two, maybe? For eight people? Two or three per boss? Two, probably? Four! That's, that's a lot! Hey, you know how many we get in Mythic Raids to split between 20 people? Four. Only masochists would play World of Warcraft, am I right? Yeah. Yo, Alfred, thank you for the follow as well, man. <laughs> Only masochists. Two sources of max item level gear <sighs> means that you can create clear best in slot gear sets uh, and have the yeah, that, exact the FF path should be the command laid for it. out in front of you. This is because Savage Raids are not oh, there really it works gear when I drop do it. based. I don't know why. Savage Raids drop treasure chests that contain a certain piece of gear, and you can open this chest on any class, and it will give you the raid gear piece for that specific class. For example, the final boss of a Savage Raid tier drops a weapon chest, and if you get the weapon chest, it's not spook, a sword, yeah. or an axe, or a bow. It's whatever you want mm -hmm. it to be. This is a particular weapon type. Even better is that clearing a Savage Raid fight gives you a currency once per week, specific to every single boss. And after acquiring enough of these boss-specific currencies, you can trade them for items that that boss will drop. So after a certain amount of weeks, you are guaranteed to receive the item you're looking for. That's sick. Which means that you can accurately predict when you will get your best in slot items, how long it will take to upgrade them to max item level, and what specific pieces you're searching for. That's Lastly, good. A great benefit to a Linear like progression. All types of games and not just FF14. Feels is good, that man. Logging out for days at a time doesn't mean that you fall behind. In World of Warcraft, when you are in a high end mythic raiding guild, eight weeks, it can feel like you That's have good. to grind out whatever expansion currency is required. There has been tears 
tears. And I'm talking six to eight months tears where I have not got the item that I'm looking for in WoW. Entire tears where I have never ever seen, sometimes even seen the item, let alone win the role or the get given it, you know, like win it on the loot council or on the roll or whatever. Eight, not eight weeks. Eight months. Required to power up your borrowed power system. I remember doing hundreds of mob souls runs in Legion to farm artifact power, grinding out islands in BFA for Azerite, and now in Shadowlands, Torghast and Maw Dailies. I hate no, it to play the game to farm some arbitrary currency for a system that will be invalidated in a patch. In FF15, yep. the only things you have to care about on a weekly basis is your weekly raid lockout and tombstones. Tombstones, like I mentioned before, come from literally any piece of level 80 content. So it's you cool. can do whatever oh, that's, you enjoy in the game and that's kinda get like AP. I don't have to do a specific activity that's super boring for some oh, Vala. It's like Vala. I it's don't like Vala. care about. I can just do one dungeon per day and cap my tombstones over time. And guess what? When I have the tombstone gear I want in my <laughs> True class, rocket. I can just stop capping my tombstones every week. The game allows you to choose what you want to do, how often you want to do Oak it, leave. and doesn't lock you into a system that requires upkeep, otherwise you fall behind. There have been times where I've logged out for weeks at a time while my raid team was taking a short break, and when I logged back in weeks later, I was at the same power level I left off at, and on par with everyone else. In the high-end raid community, it generally takes 8 weeks of raiding to get full best in slot. So after 8 That's weeks nuts. of re-clears, you have months to do whatever you want. Hell yeah, raid brother. class because in FF you can have every class on the same character, stream trials, tackle an ultimate and continue your raiding journey, or log out <laughs> until the next raid releases. World of Warcraft always felt like it was designed for people who only play WoW. And while I love FF14 and have over 10,000 hours played, we have a <laughs> I still play other games every single day and do not want to play FF all day every day. In closing, when I was moving away from WoW and drifting towards FF14, <laughs> I was very skeptical of victim, that could hold no. the attention of a more hardcore raider like myself. However, I 100% made the right decision moving over to 14, with ultimate raiding breathing new life into the MMO genre for me. It gave me a goal to strive for and required me to get better as a player. I love a good goal, man. And push myself to be the best player I possibly could be. As long as FF14 keeps releasing ultimates, I'll keep playing. If you love challenging yourself and overcoming I love having a good goal to work towards. FF14 is 100% the game for you. Despite being focused on more casual content, there is still plenty of content for high-end raiders and people who enjoy being really good at the games they play. The speedrun community in 14 is huge, and competition is fierce. There is also a huge parsing community, and fighting for high he percentiles quit. <laughs> is really fun. It can definitely get a bit Our brother is fallen. trying to be the best in the world, but what game isn't like that? If you're still on the fence about trying FF14, then I'd say give it a try. It starts really slow, and most people will try to tell you about how good the music is, or the story, or the glamour system. It's all cool! For the gamers out there, unshowered, sweaty, hey, and sweaty raid gods. You can be a gamer a and appreciate music. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification <laughs> bell to stay updated with my videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Thanks, Lynx. I love passing. No, no, you cannot say the P word, guys. No P word, no FF logs. Okay, that's illegal activity. Dude, I made a 15 minute video into one hour 15. I have to be one of the best out there. I have to be.